Hi, my name is Gwen McMillan, and I'm one of the medical directors of pharmacogenomics at ARUP Laboratories, and also an associate professor of pathology at the University of Utah. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about warfarin pharmacogenomics. Warfarin, which you may recognize as Coumadin, is the most widely prescribed anticoagulant drug in the world. Despite decades of experience prescribing warfarin, this drug consistently appears in the list of drugs most likely to cause life-threatening adverse drug reactions. Specifically, too much warfarin can lead to life-threatening bleeding. Not enough warfarin may contribute to blood clots. One reason for the high prevalence of adverse drug reactions with warfarin is the wide range of clinical, environmental, and genetic variables that affect dosing. For example, age, body mass, liver function, and co-medications can certainly affect dosing requirements, as can exposure to nicotine and vitamin K. The standard of care today is to monitor warfarin using the International Normalized Ratio, or INR, which is calculated from a prothrombin time. Because the INR is used to make dosing decisions, it makes sense that we should consider the best time to measure and interpret an INR. Pharmacogenetic testing can help. Specifically, pharmacogenetic testing to identify variants in two common genes is clinically available and well accepted scientifically. The two genes include cytochrome P450 2C9, which codes for the enzyme with the same name. That particular enzyme is involved in inactivation of S warfarin, which is the active form of warfarin. So variants in the CYP2C9 gene will lead to sensitivity, as well as a longer time to steady state, and um, perhaps the need for loading doses. The other gene involved in warfarin pharmacogenomics is vitamin K epoxide reductase subunit complex 1, or vcor c one Now this particular enzyme actually represents the target for warfarin, and so thereby represents pharmacodynamics of warfarin. Variants in this gene affect the um, dose requirement for warfarin. So the exciting thing about pharmacogenetics, unlike many of the other factors, is that it can be performed pre-therapeutically and used to guide drug and dose selection. My colleagues and I at the University of Utah recently published a study where we showed up to a four-day advantage in the time to a stable INR when pharmacogenetic information is used along with clinical information to guide such dosing. AREP has incorporated pharmacogenetic and clinical factors into the reporting for warfarin genotyping, and information is available on our website, areuplab.com.